November 7th, 2014, the gaming world stood still. BlizzCon, a world-renowned conference run by none other than Blizzard themselves, had just revealed a colossal title, one that would change the gaming landscape forever. Overwatch had towered over the other releases that year, drawing in 9.7 million players into the open beta. With the media being flooded with Overwatch, the world was gripped. The game was received with universal acclaim. The world, the characters and the gameplay melded this into one phenomenal experience, one that could never be forgotten, one that was crafted into a pristine shine, with polish oozing from every facet. With the heroes leading the charge, Overwatch carved its way into what felt like every home. Year after year, Overwatch grew, expanding its heroes, maps and gameplay in line with its gargantuan ambition. However, success is a double-edged sword, and as the player count rose, so did the toxicity. And eventually the toxicity permeated every aspect of the game, but specifically the competitive mode. This drove competition higher and higher to the point where an esports franchise was set up, arising to cater to those hungry to take their skills to the next level. It's still active to this day, and Overwatch remains a competitive experience and a functional esport, albeit slightly toxic. Later on down the line, Blizzard released a new trailer showcasing Overwatch 2 with a host of returning characters, some new ones combined with a classic Pixar-like polish and tremendous sound design, a new PvE game mode with expansive skill trees on offer, and once again, the Overwatch audience, which had been slowly dwindling, had their hearts reignited. Then there was nothing. Blizzard had gone radio silent as they often did, but this time, the radio silence and a slew of other issues propped up. And if you have been following the Activision Blizzard drama, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. After much struggle and the time passed, we finally heard from Blizzard. They announced an early access to Overwatch 2. And as you expect, streamers, YouTubers alike had their go at Overwatch 2. And even the esports league had been running on future patches of Overwatch. It was all a bit of a cluster truck if you ask me. The reception was lukewarm and many had been left scratching their heads. What had they just played? Surely the devs had to be further along than this, they asked. Fast forward and now we have the early access for Overwatch 2. So let's break it down. Here is the Overwatch 2 review. Enjoy. Overwatch 2 definitely felt improved when it comes to graphics. It's improved its look, leaning more into the Pixar-like quality that it's known for. With this new cinematic feeling, the game does feel fresh. Each character from Overwatch 1 has a completely new look. And although I still don't know why Genji doesn't wear his hood from the trailer Zero Hour, the fresh lick of paint really lends itself well to the polish that Blizzard has presented itself in what's famous amongst Blizzard games. Although, it is just a lick of paint. The style is still the same from Overwatch. Back in 2014, people were blown away by the presentation that Overwatch had. The same Pixar-like quality but in a shooter was unheard of at the time, so the nostalgia has naturally worn off, as most people have already encountered Overwatch in some shape or form by now. Without a doubt, the Overwatch universe is a masterclass in world building. Each character feels distinctive and individual in its own right. This went such a long way to building its identity in the FPS environment. Blizzard as it stands has its own roster of giants, be it Starcraft, WoW, or Hearthstone. Each oozes with their own flair and individuality. And if you are new to the Overwatch universe, or if you're just a fan of excellent animation and artwork, there's a lot of appreciation to be found here. A first person shooter with mobile elements, that's Overwatch in a nutshell. The gameplay is fast paced, addictive and stylized. The presentation is spotless and this is by no means an exaggeration. Blizzard is known for its high levels of polish and Overwatch has always had that. Whether you're talking about its movie-like animations, its world or its character models, Everything is so squeaky clean. With the shift from 6v6 to 5v5, dropping one tank out of the process, the game runs at a much faster pace, one that in my opinion was needed to break out of the stale double shields meta that permeated the game for such a long time. As it stands, there are two healers, two damage dealers, and they're accompanied by one tank. The tanks have had a major modification from the first game, such as Orissa, 
who has gone from being a bunker tank to an absolute savage with no ends to her aggression. This, along with many others, was such a nice change to the gameplay loop. Standing in front of S.H.I.E.L.D. spending 30 minutes doing the exact same gameplay loop is beyond tedious. With the rework of tanks and the change to the 5v5, each map is intoxicating in a good way. The viewer numbers speak for themselves, with Overwatch 2 going well over 200k on Twitch in its first few days. But it's not all good. Another thing that's been changed is the loot box system. Gone are the random drops that dictated whether you get a legendary drop or not. The loot boxes had been the subject of criticism since its inception, and it's arguable that the implementation of the loot boxes in Overwatch popularized the bad practice for other games, and I hate to draw lines in the sand, but I dislike loot boxes. I think they are bad game design, and they are designed to be intentionally ambiguous to trick players into spending money chasing elusive skins and whatnot for the best clout among friends. Now there's an even more egregious system, a battle pass that requires so much grind it would literally take you thousands of hours to finish the unlocks. And I don't know about you, but I personally don't have thousands of hours in any FPS game that I own. The sense of progression is practically non-existent, but hey you can buy this premium battle pass that can unlock everything for just a mere swipe of one of your credit cards. No biggie, right? Overwatch 2 is free to play. So maybe it's justified in some sense, right? Right? If you had played the first game, you'd carry over all your skins, but good luck if you're a new player and you want to collect all the skins. Ultimately, the gaming industry is becoming more and more indoctrinated by this idea of monetizing every aspect of progression. And it's hurting us, all of us, and it creates for a worse experience across the board. And I hope that consumers, or we as consumers, push back whenever possible. And there's more bad news, unfortunately. Along with the ridiculous queue times at the start of the launch. Am I actually in the game now? Oh my god. Got him. All right. Fuck! Wait a sec. It just put me back in queue. Bro, what the fuck? Let's see how long this takes to go down. Let's see how long it takes to go down. Maybe, maybe it'll go down fast. The general consensus is that Overwatch 2 is really like Overwatch 1.5. Really, all that Overwatch 2 has going for it is a fresh lick of paint and three new characters. Yes, three. We have Junker Queen, Sojourn, Hiriko, which are all great additions to the diverse hero roster. But that's it, along with a couple of new maps, there really is nothing new. The PvE mode hasn't been released and we have no word of when it will be out. With such an important part of the game being left out after being heavily advertised as the unique selling point of the sequel, it begs the question, what the hell has Blizzard been doing with all their development time? Sure, Activision Blizzard have been in a whirlwind of bad press, but surely they were still working on the title during all these incidents. Surely. It seems that Overwatch 2 was in limbo for most of its development, and the recent drama only exasperated this issue. It's hard to get a full picture of Overwatch 2 when it's half finished and we are beta testing the game. It'll be interesting to see where this goes in the next year, full of games. Where will they release the full version? What will it have? How many new characters will they add? For now, we don't know. We'll have to see. As of right now, there isn't much story to Overwatch 2 apart from the animated trailers we've seen so far. The Overwatch lore is on a whole based on piecing together information from character interactions, comics and videos. There are some really great videos on YouTube that piece together all this information in a digestible format combining the videos. I'll link one of those videos below which is basically a full length movie so buckle in and enjoy the goodness that is the Blizzard animation team. There's a lot to be discovered and I look forward to the PvE mode to hopefully shine a light on the sequel's story and direction. The vast quantity of heroes with their own backstories going against the series villains makes for really great content, each with their own little comics and animations which I imagine will be available for every character. 
by the time the series draws to an end. Truly Overwatch has a great story, it's really in depth and the characters are incredibly well designed, go and check it out. How does it run? Flawlessly to be frank, but that's not saying much when Overwatch 2 is basically an Overwatch 1 with a reshade. It runs exceptionally well, smooth performance on every setting. Now admittedly if you are running the ultra setting, it does cause a slight lag in the input. It's taxing for any system and if you're playing competitively or trying to become a professional streamer, I'd recommend lowering the settings to reduce the impact of the input lag. Shadows, depth of field, texture filtering and texture quality can all be quite demanding, but Overwatch seems to handle it quite well all things considered. Most people will be playing this at a 1080p resolution and at this resolution you'll be looking at a smooth experience with a relatively modern graphics card, 1080, you know, stuff like that. The menu is silky smooth and goes from transition to transition with little fuss. A lot of work has gone into the menus and I have acknowledged that everything looks brand new. Now whether that's for the experience of the consumer or just because the battle pass is present in the game, I will never know. But it is a good experience and the game does run well. Sound design, perhaps one of the best parts of this game and this universe, critically acclaimed for having one of the best soundtracks to ever be associated with a video game, stealing hearts across the globe. Let's have a brief look at part of the Zero Hour trailer from Overwatch 2, and then you can come to your own opinion about the soundtrack. This video may get claimed or demonetized, but it's okay, I want you to experience the wonderful sound design within this universe. Bear with me here for the next two minutes, I really would like you to see this. As you can probably tell from this heart-wrenching cinematic, the soundtrack has gone far beyond what most game universes do with their own music. Every second captures a vast multitude of emotions, doubling as a fan service and truly epic moments that will reverb in your mind a long time after you finish watching the trailer. What's better is that these sounds that you hear in the cinematics are also in-game. Genji's ultimate is a fan favourite and feels just as awesome to use or listen to. When a good Genji player pops his ult and you know chaos is about to ensue, I found myself swelling with pride when I first watched this trailer. As these are characters I've spent years with, Overwatch has one of the most articulate and beautiful universes in any gaming history that I've ever played. 
It has the characters and music at the forefront and it lets you feel all these emotions at the front line. Let's see if it can pull it together during its full release with an even more stunning gameplay outlook and a fully fleshed out PvE mode accompanied by an epic soundtrack and additional trailers. And there you have it, your Overwatch 2 review. Hope you enjoyed it. Overwatch 2 has all the makings of an excellent sequel and hopefully we'll see it live out its potential in its complete release later on. I'm giving it a truly excellent rating and despite some of its more egregious aspects of monetization and what essentially is a large 1.5 patch, the new shift to 5v5 with the introduction of new passives for various roles in game, Overwatch does feel invigorated. The gameplay loop is satisfying, each match is fast paced and I love it. It's a pleasure to play. Despite its infamous reputation for having some unsavoury community members, I hope that you also find your love for it the same way I did back in Overwatch 1. Well, thank you for tuning in guys. Don't forget I'm streaming on Twitch, same name as my uh, YouTube channel, Bearded Breakdown. Come and join me there if you want to see me play some games. And I will see you next time with the next review. Call of Duty up next. Bye.